Well, good morning everybody and welcome back to Cardano Mint. My name is James and I'm the stake pool operator for the stake pool Maximum Mint, ticker A-M-I-N-T, A Mint. And today we have a lot of news to cover. There's uh, Alonzo moving forward very steadily and we're looking at some government uh, regulation that's coming down as well as what is going on with the charts. Let's check if all of this noise is affecting price. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so first let's start with an article here. Uh, it says Cardano is expected to blast off with the launch of smart contracts after the Alonzo hard fork. So Charles Hoskinson has uh, updated everybody on the current situation. We have moved out of Alonzo Blue, we have finished Alonzo White, and now we are starting Alonzo Purple. Uh, this is going to be a slow onboarding of uh, large business customers and it is the forward motion that we've been looking for to show us that we are getting ready to run and have smart contracts on the main net. It's not coming just yet, but the estimated date looks like the end of August to the first or second week into September. And so things are moving forward and they are steady. Um, it's really excellent to see the movement of uh, this introduction to this new function into the Cardano network because now Ethereum will have a direct competitor to compete with and their competitor is Cardano. And that means low transaction fees, quick confirmation times, scalability, welcome new businesses. A popular market analyst says that he believes Cardano's forthcoming update could be a game changer for the fifth largest cryptocurrency by market cap. The pseudonymous head of Coin Bureau, who goes by the name of Guy, tells 1.2 million YouTuber, YouTube subscribers that he's expecting in the next few weeks to be excited with several major projects in the space, including Cardano. Set to reach major milestones, Cardano's upcoming smart contract update could become one of the most important developments this industry has seen to date. Cardano's smart contracts capabilities have been in the works for years and it looks like we could be in the final stretches of this revolutionary rollout. Co-founded in 2015 by Charles Hoskinson, Cardano went live in September 2017. The Cardano Foundation oversees the development of the project and commissions two companies, Input Output Hong Kong and Emergo, to develop its software. Most of you already are well aware of the structure of Cardano and how ironclad it is. We also know that it is developed under a peer review environment. It is self-funded. It is getting ready to launch smart contracts. Cardano, ha there is no question with Cardano's validity and its ability to possibly take over the market and absorb market share from larger projects that have existed previously. So in this, in this article, we're basically talking about the potential, or at least Guy is talking about the potential for Alonzo to open the floodgates and cause Cardano to go and reach up to 4 to $5 by the end of the year. And that wouldn't actually be where the development ends because this would just be the initial opening of the floodgates. Uh, due to things like Project Catalyst and further development, paid development, we should expect to see more network traffic and more functionality come out of the Cardano network sooner than later. And this is going to start to progress in about 40 days, 45 days, depending on um, any bugs or hiccups that they might see in the network. But right now, so far, so good. We went, like I said, we went through blue, we went through white, we're on to purple, we're going to be light purple, dark purple, and then we're going to move forward from then. But Things are moving very rapidly in this space and the timing couldn't be any better. The only problem that I can see coming up is that it looks like regulation is coming our way and let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's look at it real quick. So crypto community slams disastrous new amendment to Biden's big infrastructure bill. Now, in a nutshell, what this seems like to me is we have some a bill that is trying to be passed and the people who are submitting it clearly just don't understand um, what is going on and because the bill itself doesn't make any sense for what they're trying to do. 
Uh, they want a stake pool operator. This is one example of something that's in the bill, but they want somebody like a stake pool operator like me to collect KYC information on delegators. And if you guys know anything about Cardano and the network and uh, staking, you would already know automatically that's impossible. It's not any type of information we receive. I don't have any information on my delegators, who they are or anything. And so that would make this uh, requirement impossible for me to fulfill. Hence, um, I would be out of compliance with regulation if they pass this bill. I'm not too worried that this will get passed because the bill really doesn't make sense and there's a strong argument stating that this is an unfair and um, unnatural request for the business model. It's not information that we could provide even if we wanted to. Um, I hope that makes delegators feel safe, um, but uh, it, it kind of makes me worried that the people that are constructing regulation or thinking about regulation are doing it before they even clearly have a clue of what they're dealing with. And so that's my only major concern with this bill. Fortunately, we do have some friends in the business. There are some companies out there like the Electronic Frontier Foundation and the Fight for the Future, and they are two privacy-minded digital rights organizations. They have slammed the bill along with Square, Rabbit Capital, Coin Center, Blockchain ASSN, and many others. So. Uh, what we need to do, I think, um, is more education. And I, I don't think this is abnormal or inappropriate. Um, this is all very new. And education is what's going to be what helps everybody to figure out what kind of regulation can be, be implemented, what matters, um, and how they're able to do this. I don't think that uh, this will, like I said, get passed but I don't think it'll stop either. They will figure out and learn what's appropriate and appropriately uh, you know, regulate from there or get their cut, I should say, from there. But um, and at this point in time, I'm not too worried about them passing this. Um, we do have a lot of support and we are working on um, contacting our senators, at least if you guys are out there and you want to see pro proliferation in the cryptocurrency space, um, it would be wise to contact your local senator and governor and let them know about how disappointed you are about this uh, proposal and what uh, we should do to stop it. And like I said, I think the big point is going to be education. I think um, there should be some sort of liaison that can explain and teach about how these things work so the government doesn't uh, do this. This is kind of embarrassing because um, it looks like they've just kind of jumped without even knowing what they're doing. And um, I, I just, I have uh, higher expectations from our government that they would do a better job at understanding what they're trying to regulate before they try and regulate it. Anyway, so enough on that. So we have all of this wonderful news on one side. We have Alonzo and it's moving forward and it's getting released and we have a soft date. And now we have this bad news that we're seeing from um, regulators that obviously want to just try and jump in with both feet and not even know what they're doing. So let's ask the question, is this affecting price? So let's head to the charts. All right, you guys, so this is my chart. We, if you have been with me and watching my videos, you have probably seen this chart at least 10 times. Um, I have not changed it and I have not altered these lines. I have just developed um, a time frame of how Cardano has been moving. And I, it, I'm sure you guys have probably heard this before, but Cardano is appearing to be one of the most stable cryptocurrency networks that we have seen to date. Now it's not 100% stable, it's not a stable coin. There are jokes that Cardano is acting like a stable coin because it's just not dropping as far as other currencies are once they've peaked up. Um, so it really is holding its value and that just goes to show you that a well-planned out network with a proper foundation and infrastructure can really dispel some of the nonsense that we're seeing as far as manipulation in the cryptocurrency markets. Cardano's staking model, its proof of stake model, shows that we have over 70% staked on our network. And that is fantastic because that means people aren't trading it on repositories when it's going higher or lower. You know what they're doing. They're happy to receive that 5% injection or whatever it is, the rewards that they're receiving every five days. They are loving it so much they're not trading it. And um, this is something that I'm trying to teach everybody. In fact, I am a private teacher 
Um, if anybody gets in contact with me, I will go through Zoom with you and I will teach you all of the rules, the safety, and I will literally hand walk you through the process of how you can basically become your own bank. I will teach you how to buy the crypto, I will teach you how to send the crypto, and I'll also teach you how to delegate the crypto. Because if you're going to buy it and you're going to hold it, you might as well take advantage of delegating it and making 5%. That way you don't have to worry about selling and trading and trying to make a profit. The money's just coming in already, or I should say the rewards are coming in already, and, uh, and that's fantastic. So that being said, um, like I said, we'll go back to the charts real quick. We are looking like Cardano is holding strong. Um, Ever since February, we have been bouncing down to the $1 mark regardless of everything else. Bitcoin was dropping. Um, it went way, way up. It held for a while and then crashed way, way down. Cardano has been holding steady, holding steady, every now and again touching down to that $1 range. And these are just wicks touching down, really, if you think about it. The true move for Cardano has been all oh, slightly up the entire time. And now right here, you know, obviously you can't um, guess the exact moves. And then, you know, I don't know how the time is going to work. You can't predict these ups exactly. But I do know that it should be somewhere around here. And we are right where we are supposed to be for this time frame. We should be getting ready to maybe um, do one more little dip or... If we get um, some really quick movement with Alonzo, we could probably see ourselves shooting right back up into this range. And you guys, look at the range. We are hovering into the $2.20 and $1.60 range. We're right in here right now. So as long as Cardano keeps pace as it has been doing for the entire year, um, you guys, we're looking at a $2 Cardano sooner than later. And if you consider Cardano is at $1.41, you'll notice already that we've been creeping up because I've been trying to contact as many people as I can when Cardano was down at a dollar to help people onboard the cheapest that they possibly can. And I've helped plenty of people. I would love to help more. But as you can see, Cardano is at $1.41 and it looks like it is getting ready to keep going. Like I said, we may see a little bit of a dip down. It might go down to 130 again. That's the nature of how things work. You know, you buy something at a dollar, people want to sell it at a dollar 40. But the people that understand how the network is really working and what is about to unfold, those are our buyers at every price in this range. We're looking for people that understand that smart contracts are being launched. It, Cardano will be the only other competitor to Ethereum, and Ethereum is having major issues right now. So I would grab onto Cardano as much as I can, and I would personally hold on to it just to see what happens over the next two to five years, because it's going to be a very interesting two to five years when it comes to Cardano and all that it has to offer the cryptocurrency or blockchain space. All right, guys. Well, that being said, um, like I said, pivotal moment here. We have the 120 day, the seven day, the 15 day, the 50 day and the 200 day all clustered in a group. This is literally um, anybody's game at this point. But like I said, if you know what's going on, most likely your bet is going to be sideways or up, most likely not too far down. So um, I think that sums it up. Um, we're covering Alonzo, which is on time. We're looking at new um, regulation that's trying to jump in. Um, they're working on it. It's, it's definitely a rocky start for them, but hopefully they'll figure it out. And Cardano, once again, the solid train, unstoppable, and this network is going right to Cardano City. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys liked the video, and if you ha have any questions or comments, please uh, drop them in the comment section of this video. You can also check out our website, cardanomint.com. Check us out in our Telegram, and I'll put a link in the description below as well. So that's all I have for today. A lot of great information, a steady Cardano, and a lot to look forward to in the future. And believe it or not, regulation isn't even that bad, because if they do regulate, it's more like they are assimilating it into the system. Yeah, we're going to get taxed, and as we should, we should support our governments, and we should support our country, you know, pay for those schools, pay for those roads. Um, that, is our, that is our duty, and I'm happy to do that. I just want to make sure it's done in a fair and just way that doesn't exclude um, or um, that doesn't uh, target uh, one particular demographic. I think it should be even and fair across the board. 
All right, well, enough from me. I hope you guys are going to have a wonderful weekend. Happy Friday. We've got a lot going on this weekend, and I hope you guys are just having a wonderful life, having a wonderful day, learning a lot, growing a lot, making new friends. Um, if you guys have any questions, like I said, drop them off in the comments. But uh, that's all I have for today. So have a wonderful weekend. This is James, the Stake Pool Operator for Maximum Mint, ticker A-Mint. We will talk to you guys later. Bye.